Welcome back to another episode of Plant Based Dads. I'm Joey. We are a vegan family cooking channel. We also do some product reviews. We try out restaurants, all that kind of stuff. If you like what you hear, please hit that like button, show us some love, and please hit the subscribe button. Become one of the Plant Based Dads family. The holiday season is upon us, and to me, that means a lot of baking and a lot of cooking. So we have some traditions here, and one of them is holiday cookies. And today I'm gonna to show you one of my favorite ones. This one's always a crowd pleaser, and it's always a shock, right? Because it's cherry almond shortbread cookies. I know, it sounds bizarre, but they're so good. People taste these and they're like, all right, I'll give them a try. And then every year they're like, hey, you bring in the cherry almond shortbread cookies? I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't come without them, right? Stick around, let's get started. All right, the first thing we're gonna need is some butter. Here we have three quarters of a cup of vegan butter. It's one and a half sticks. So we're gonna throw that in the uh, mixer right here. Now I'm using my mixer with a paddle attachment, so if you're doing this at home, that's the attachment you wanna use. All right, so next we're gonna use two thirds of a cup of granulated sugar. Now, sugar itself, just regular white sugar, is not vegan because it's processed through bone char. If you get organic sugar, organic sugar is usually vegan. This is actually organic vegan sugar. So we're gonna pop that in, two thirds of a cup. We're gonna beat this on high for one minute just to kind of get the butter softened up. All right, so that's mixed up. The butter's uh, pretty softened and whipped, so that's good. All right, so next we're gonna add our vanilla. So this is uh, just plain vanilla, right? All right, so we got a teaspoon of vanilla there. Next, we're gonna use almond extract. So we're gonna use a half a teaspoon of that. So half of the amount that you use of the vanilla. This really gives it the almond flavor. All right, so let's turn that on and the medium speed and let it start mixing. With the mixer on, I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of cherry juice. Now I've got the maraschino cherries, right? I just used the juice right out of the bottle. We're gonna use the cherries in it too. This is two tablespoons of cherry juice. I'm gonna drizzle it in slowly. All right, after about a minute, you wanna shut it off. Taper it down. All right, so now we're ready to add our flour. So I've got two cups of all-purpose flour here and just put it in without the mixer on, okay? Otherwise it's just gonna go all over the place. I'm gonna turn the mixer on low to get the flour starting to beat into the, the wet ingredients. So you wanna mix this on low until you get a, a very soft dough, until a, a dough starts forming. And you can see here, we're starting to get a dough form. So I'm gonna shut it off here and we're gonna scrape down the sides. We're gonna pop in 20 chopped up maraschino cherry. This really gives it the taste. So when we put this in, we're gonna kinda just mix it a very little bit and then we'll be done with it, okay? So let's get the cherries in. And this would also be a good time to throw in a half a cup of vegan white chocolate chip. Let's kind of scrape the sides down. I think we actually have what we need here. So you can kind of see here that the uh, the cherries are are dispersed, but they're not they're not like blended and liquefied. They're still in bits here. All right. So at this point, we want to get the dough pressed into just a compact form here. And we wanna get it in the refrigerator for one to four hours. So you have to plan this recipe ahead of time. I'm gonna place this plastic wrap right on top of the dough. And you kinda of see there, the plastic wrap's all set. All right, so I'm just gonna put this in the fridge and give it some time to chill. So I'm just gonna use my, uh, my handy ice cream scoop, right? It's uh, like a tablespoon ice cream scoop. And I like doing scoops because uh, I know that every cookie is the same size when I do this, so they're all gonna cook at the same time. They're gonna cook evenly. Otherwise, the cookies are all different sizes. Some of them are done, some of them aren't, right? So we're just gonna fill up this uh, cookie sheet here. Now remember, these cookies are not going to spread, right? So they're gonna look just like this when they're cooked. They'll come, they'll drop a little bit, but they're not gonna spread like chocolate chip cookies. So what I like to do is, I like to take the spatula here and just press them down, right? So they're flat. And this is the way I like to present them. I'm gonna put these in a preheated oven at 350 degrees for about 10 or 11 minutes. 
these cookies are very tricky to tell when they're done. You do not want them browning. This is the color they should be. So the minute you start seeing like little golden edges or a little bit of coloring, they're done and you want to get them out. 11 minutes the most. So I'm going to put them in 10 to 11 minutes and we'll see how it goes. All right guys, so you can see here, the cookies are done. If you look around the edges, you can see that uh, the edges are starting to brown. The tops are kind of still the same color as they were, maybe a little golden. And if you look underneath, you can see that they're kind of golden, but not overdone. And the very last step to this is just to take some of the chocolate chips that you have left over and melt some of them and just kind of drizzle it over the cookies, right? You don't have to be really perfect about it. It can be thick, it can be thin. When you're serving these things, first of all, if you're going to a party, right, um, and you're bringing this or anything, right, just save yourself some trouble. Go to the 99 cent store and get a tray to serve stuff on, right? Get one of these because like this is metal, it was 99 cents. And I just put the cookies on here or whatever I'm bringing, right, an appetizer. Then when I wanna skate out without making a big scene, I don't have to make a big production on, hey, I want to leave, can I get my plate back? Otherwise, you know, I like to use my Santa plate. My Santa plate is the my favorite part of the holiday, right? Santa just kind of sits here and holds all the cookies for me, and he always does an amazing job. So now the big question, how do these taste? Let's give it a shot. All right, I'm ready to give these a shot. Let's see what they taste like. Mmm. So good. One of my favorite holiday recipes every year. I hope you make these. If you do, leave a message in the comment with a picture or let me know how they turned out. Have you entered our giveaway yet? There's a video link above and that video tells you how to get entered and what the contest is all about. It's our one year YouTube anniversary contest uh, and talk, talk about how we wound up with this extra juicer and it's brand new and still in the box. So if someone's got to win it, it might as well be you. Have you checked out our merch site yet? Go to Etsy.com, put in plant-based ads, all one word. There's sweatshirts, t-shirts, uh, there's stuff for plant-based ads and for Gamer Awesome 2006 if you're following Lex's gaming channel. All right guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Show us some love. What's not to love? If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and become part of the Plant-Based Dads family. Click on the red subscribe button, it'll turn white. Click on the bell, two little lines will appear, and that'll tell you every time we have a new video, usually every Monday. And please leave a comment below. What are some of your holiday traditions? Do you do cookies? Do you some do something else? Uh, we have quite a few of them, but this is one of my three favorite holiday cookies that we make every year. I hope you like this video. Happy holidays, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.